Right, if anyone is considering buying a fairway wood this year out of the 2021 range, then there's every chance these two models will be on your list. And that's the Ping G425, which I've already uh, pretty much raved about. We haven't actually featured the three wood, uh, which is going to be in a head to head this week with the PXG 0211. And that's, uh, that's a brand that you would have never seen uh, compete in this kind of price category until this year. But as we know, it's a major, major difference from PXG in terms of the price point of this range. So there still is now a £40 difference in that this, in the UK at least, is the cheaper model of the two. And the question is, can we separate them in terms of performance and can I find the differences on why you might pick one over the other? Right, before we go any further, very briefly about the aesthetics of these two clubs, because they have a lot of similarities, and it's interesting that uh, they've both got this matte finish, which again, I'm a massive fan of, and again, they're very different to that of uh, its other competitors that go for this high gloss crown. So yeah, matte finish, black on both. PXG have got this pretty much iconic look that they've developed now, which is this black band in the front of the club, um, and the grey uh, is the three quarters of the crown. It really separates the sort of face from the rest of the body. Very much uh, minimalistic on the Ping G425. Those three dots very much frame where the ball sits. And I've got to say, visually, they both look very good. And like I said, for me, it's that matte finish that ticks the boxes. From the underneath, in terms of shelf appeal, once again, they're very much uh, sort of stealth black in their looks, blacks and greys. So really easy on the eye. And they're both, again, fairly shallow in the sort of height of the club as well. So more of a, an elongated, perhaps a more traditional look in terms of the PXG, in terms of its teardrop look. But they're both fairly low profile three woods. And again, for me, um, I don't know why, but picking the ball off the turf with that sort of low crown, I like that at a dress. But again, that's very much a personal uh, preference. But I've got to say, on both counts, I think these are probably two of the best looking three woods that are on the market right now. Right, so this week we're going to be trying to find fairways at uh, Quail Hollow Golf Club. Why not? Uh, fairly tight uh, par four. I'm going to hit uh, a few balls now with this PXG and give you my immediate sort of feedback on, on how I think it performs and what I think it sounds like. I do want to mention before we go too much further, you will notice he's got different shafts in. This is a Diamana 70 gram stiff and in the, uh, in the ping we've got the CB Alter and that's a 75 gram stiff, uh, 65 gram stiff. So there's a slight difference and there are variables and don't forget, don't get too wrapped up in all that. This is very much a subjective head to head, uh, but yes, there are slight differences. Um, I've already said, very much classic in its looks at address, this PXG. I think the crown is superb. I've said that about all the drivers that have released in this last 12 months. I love this map finish and it frames the ball incredibly, uh, incredibly well. I'll just hit a ball with a camera on and I'll uh, see if we can pick up on the sound. That's a decent ball and that's, uh, we certainly found a fair way with that one. High launching ball again. I can't believe how the three woods uh, of this kind of generation in this last two or three years and how high they launched the ball. It's incredible. That's a two, 218 carry launches into, uh, into space and fairly easy to do so. We are hitting again off, uh, off a tee today, but I, I think again, this sits really nice in terms of being able to pick one off of the floor as well. The one thing I will say, and I'm gonna, I might as well mention it in both, I've already collected data. The thing that's very noticeable about the PXG and of the Ping G425 range is they sound very, very similar. And they're a little bit harsh, they're a little bit hard in terms of the way they feel and sound. And for me, that would be one negative that I'd throw in there because I would prefer something just a little bit softer, a little bit more responsive. But when you get one, the ball seems to absolutely rock it out the face. But like I said, I, I, there's so many similarities between this range at the moment. Uh, it is hard to split them. So I'll carry on seeing if we can hit a few more fairways um, at Quail Hollow and what we'll do at the end of all this is we'll have some kind of challenge as we normally do and we'll pick another interesting hole to do that but so far hard to criticize you can hear that sound I mean it's a solid solid ball again but you can hear that sort of very crisp very sort of harsh um, knock out the face and for a lot of people you're gonna like that but for me I'd want it to be a little bit softer. I'm just looking there, 220 carry. It's really in all the numbers, so I'll switch over to the Ping G425 and see how this thing does. Right, switch over to the Ping, and the first thing that is very noticeably different is the sort of alignment, the white lines that you see on the uh, club face itself. And I think it's a very simple 
but incredibly good alignment aid. And what you see in, in the face itself is there are no lines whatsoever. And what that does, it just allows you to frame the ball incredibly well. White lines either side, you've got three simple dots that are on the crown. And again, they just make alignment incredibly simple. And I love the way they've done that. It sounds very, very basic, but it's really, really good. And setting the ball up, you feel like you've got that ball or that club pointing exactly where you want it to be. The crown itself couldn't be any more simplistic. Uh, it is just that black matte finish and uh, minimalistic would be an understatement. And I've said again, slightly more um, sort of shallower crown, even more so on this than the PXG model. And it really does appeal to me. Let's see if we can pick up on the sound at all. I think that's almost identical in the way it sounds. And I hope that the microphone's right up here and the ball's down there. So I'm never really sure that we pick it up that well, but I don't know, I hope you can. And they're both exactly the same. They're quite a harsh sound. And like I said, I can only describe it as quite um, hard in terms of the way it makes the face feel. But in terms of performance, no secrets. They both do incredibly well, but there is a difference between the two. Right, data is collected and uh, a smile on my face because it's the bit I enjoy the most. This challenge that we're gonna finish with, uh, we'll go two shots each. We'll start with the PXG. Uh, we're at a course called Sweeten's Cove. We've got 220 yard, uh, 221 yard par three. And to be honest with you, as you know, you'd probably be taking this kind of club more off, uh, off a tee of a par four or maybe second shot into par five. So a rarity that you will, uh, it will be called upon for a par three. But at 221, it's kind of bang on the button. Right, here goes PXG first. That's down the left, I think. Is it away down the left? And it's turned over as well. Grab a piece, you've got no chance and then grabbing nothing. Well, we got the distance, 219 carry, so it's bang on the button in terms of where it needs to be, but just close that club face a little bit. Right, try that one again. Ah, now I've just opened it a bit too much. That's gonna cut out to the right, I think. Stay, hold on. Hold on. If it can grab a piece of the green, it's in with a shout. That's not bad, you know. Well, I would take that, you know, 204 carry, open the club face up, you can see that just sliding off down into the hollow. Wow, that was cruel. Oh, not got a lot to beat, really. If I can stick one on the green with the, uh, with the Ping G425, then it's in for a win. How good did that green look there? We were sitting on the green with a birdie put, albeit a long one, and all of a sudden uh, we're down into the uh, down into the runoffs. Right, ping, can you do any better? Or well, more importantly, and can you do any better? Yeah, that's the one. That is bang on. This will be interesting. Just got enough shape. Is it gonna carry the bunker or is it gonna go into it? Oh, oh, wow, that is cruel. I can't believe I'm, I'm, I'm walking the wrong way here to get a ball. That is so realistic, but that's gone into the green side bunker. Certainly got the win at the moment in, in nearest the flag, but we haven't got a ball on the green yet. I couldn't have hit that last one any better. Can we get one on the green? That's a real good shot again, you know. Has it got enough cut this time to stay away from that bunker? This could be good. This could be good, you know. Kick up, kick up. Now stay. How good is that for a finish? That's a decent chance at birdie. 205 carry, little bit of fade on that one and got it near where it needed to be. I think on that basis, the Ping G425 won the challenge. Well, that was so good again.
Right, based on that competition, then the ping would come out on top. But as you know, there's a little bit more to it than that, than just the four shots. And I collected quite a bit of data. And as you can see, it was fairly good, to be honest with you. My swing was uh, quite good on the morning uh, and it was equally as good with both clubs. So I was uh, sort of given both a fair crack of the whip. But you will see, we leak a few to the left, I leak a few to the right. and uh, But more often than not, I must say, I found the fairway with both clubs and I was equally impressed with them. But I'll throw the data in front of you now. Um, we'll, we'll start off with the PXG club. Uh, for a three wood, I would say my sort of carry distance is anything between 225 and 230. That's the kind of region I've been in when we've done this testing over the last few years. And we got an average of 232. It was incredibly long, uh, and I th sort of suggested that through the video. Um, still with a very sort of high launching ball, 12.7 launch angle, 79 peak height. So it wasn't just a case of these were like bullets firing out uh, with a low trajectory. These things were, as I mentioned, picking up nice and high, incredible ball flight, and the carry was good. But like I said, that is as good as I've got in terms of how I performed in the morning with it. I'll then throw out the numbers for the uh, ping product. Um, what you'll see, ball speed's quite a bit slower, actually three mile an hour uh, almost um, between the two. Uh, 225 or almost 226 carry, so maybe six yards to split them, six and a half yards to split them in carry distance. Slightly lower ball flight, 11.9, and obviously that affected the peak height. The spin numbers were very similar on both, maybe a little bit more spinny. Um, on the ping which would again have affected that carry distance and the other thing to mention to take it back to the shaft differences I think the Diamana uh, slightly heavier weight and I think it's a slightly stiffer um, than what we had in that CB Alta so arguably the shaft performed better as well for me in that PXG but what I would say is if you picked either of those with those kind of carry distances with that kind of spin number you again, once I always say the same thing, you're splitting airs. The question throughout the video is again, uh, that raises its head to me is why am I bothering with driver when I can probably, you know, at best average 10 yards further than that, but uh, a bit more control with those two club heads, a bit more confidence with that in hand. And I've got to say, really impressive with both. I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily, my major issue is um, would I game either one? And... In the sense of the seven wood and five wood, I've been very much tempted to put the Ping G425 in my bag. And that's even with the sound issues because I don't like the way it sounds, but I can't argue with the performance. With these two, I, I do have this overriding thing about they are a little bit hard on the ears for me and it's a really picky thing. And uh, But ideally, in terms of performance wise, data wise, they did every single thing incredibly well so uh, yeah maybe they will make their way into the bag i don't know uh, as ever that's me done thank you for watching i uh, i hope you enjoyed what you've seen a little bit of fun with the uh, with the contest there we have at the end we're still trying i say it in the videos of late we're still trying to kind of evolve in terms of track man and uh, we'll see how we can make this work and integrate it into the stuff that we're going to take out into the fairways because Wales is open this week, England is open next week, so hopefully you'll see us back out on the golf courses very, very soon. So, for the time being, uh, comments down below if you've tried any of these, um, hit that like button and subscribe if you don't already, and I will see you all soon.